Greetings, gang. Mark Boswell, Boswell Emergency Medical Education, coming at you again with another CEN video short. A little short, few minute segment on a particular topic for the CEN exam. So if you don't have time to watch the whole lectures or whatever, you can hear these little video snippets. So today I'm going to talk about heat related emergencies. There are three that are potentially on the CEN exam heat cramps, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. So heat cramps, very, very mild form of overheating or overexerting oneself. This is not really an emergency. This is seen uh, common in people who work outdoors, working in a hot environment. It's not gonna put someone in a critical condition. And they're not always having cramps either. It could just be they're fatigued or run down or tired or they quote, unquote, overdid it. Heat exhaustion is really straightforward. Patients should have normal mental status. They're probably sweating, but not profusely. They're probably sweating. Treatment for them is just to cool them off. And a lot of these heat cramps, people can just self-treat, either the job site or wherever. They just need to move into a cool environment, air conditioning, drink some fluids, cool off. They should be fine. They're not gonna be at likely risk for things like rhabdo or DIC or major electrolyte abnormalities. Heat cramps are actually pretty common. Heat exhaustion would be the next progression here. Now in heat exhaustion, your body is still, it still has its co compensation abilities intact. And the main one, of course, with heat is the sweating. So this patient's skin will be moist and it will be excessively moist. Keywords like profusely, drenched, soaking, okay? That's how we're gonna tell this apart from heat stroke. Heat exhaustion, the skin is moist. They're still sweating. Their body's still able to compensate and do that as far as a protective or a compensating resource. Another way to tell heat exhaustion from heat stroke is the mental status. Heat exhaustion, they will still be alert and oriented. Heat stroke, we'll talk about it in a minute, they're going to be altered. Now for the exam, you don't need to focus on temperatures. There's some disagreement over the exact temperatures at which, which condition starts and one stops or vice versa look at the skin and their mental status that will clue you in so a heat exhaustion patient could have a pretty high temperature they might even have a little low blood pressure rapid heart rate but they will have a normal mental status and they will still be sweating now heat stroke considered more of a true emergency um heat stroke patient you're going to tell this apart because their skin is hot and dry. They have lost their compensation ability of sweating. So the temperature is going to continue to rise. They no longer have their protective mechanisms intact. Their skin will be hot and dry, and they will most likely have some altered mental status. Again, the exact temperature is not what's important for this. It's look at those other physical findings, the skin and the mental status. Now, both heat exhaustion and heat stroke are serious. Of course, heat stroke is typically the, quote, true emergency, end quote, due to the usually significantly elevated temperature. However, both these patients we manage similarly when they present for care. They both need to be cooled off, and however you want to accomplish that is fine. Of course, turn the air conditioner on in the room, um, some uh, damp towels, that have been, uh, you got them wet and wrung the water out so it helps the evaporation loss. Ice packs, possibly. They both need to be cooled off. We don't want to cool people off too much that they start shivering, though. So, kind of mild to moderate, not overly aggressive. For both these patients, they need fluids. They have been losing fluids through the sweating process, and usually with that profuse water loss that's unique, that's uh, part of that is common to both of these, we have to worry about their electrolytes. Remember, salt is a big determinant of fluid balance. You lose water, you lose salt, and right behind that, you lose potassium. We need to look at both these patients' kidney functions. They could both be in a pre-renal type of acute renal failure. Of course, the treatment for that is fluids, fluids, fluids. So we're gonna check them for rhabdo. We're gonna look at the muscle markers, the CK, the CPK, the CKMB, maybe getting that urinalysis sent off looking for myoglobin, all right? So that's really the nuts and bolts of 
the three that are on the exam. Heat, heat cramps, very mild. Patient can self-treat, just needs some PO fluids, cool themselves off, should be okay. Heat exhaustion, look at the skin, profusely sweating, heat and a normal mental status. Heat stroke, no sweating, skin is hot and dry and an altered mental status. Treat both of those with large quantities of fluids. Check their electrolytes. Check for signs of impending acute renal failure. And that's all you're gonna need to know for the test. No specific numbers, no specific amounts, no specific electrolyte values, just those generalizations you should do fine. I hope this has been beneficial for you guys. Uh, leave me a comment below. Uh, if you liked it, found it useful, if you have a question, uh, be sure to keep following the page for hopefully more video updates soon and my daily or near every daily questions and answers. And I wish you guys the best of luck. I'll talk to you guys soon. Be safe.